The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me. And it doesn't matter where you're at. You can be, uh, you could be on the moon as long as you're here and listening at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Where, where are you? Dave doesn't care. Just shake it like it's uh, eh, up there. Uh, give me a call today, 877-927-6648. And, of course, uh, we've got a market that is uh, reminiscent of one uh, when I started in 1998. Um, talk about getting thrown in the deep end. We're going to talk about that and why I suspect uh, we will eventually find out something. I remember uh, it took almost two years to get the truth out about the flash crash, although almost everybody already knew what it was. Uh, we had uh, some other things like that, but uh, there's something going on, and uh, eh, us rubes are not uh, privy to those conversations, but I think that story uh, is probably over today. And, you know, you get a high-volume uh, low, like we're probably going to have today, means that uh, maybe you come back and retest this low. But uh, I've seen lows like this that were mechanically driven, uh, not driven on market forces. Uh, and uh, they have uh, maybe not as good a chance of retesting their lows in the short term. Um, so we'll look at that. But uh, we'll get into that with a little bit of history and everything else. But uh, yeah, it is one of those things where I I uh, cut my teeth uh, from going from uh, just a swing trader to actually sitting in front of a monitor in 1998. And, of course, uh, the big thing that happened there was either late October or first week in November uh, was the culmination of a company called Long-Term Capital Management. Uh, this disaster uh, encouraged uh, Nassim Talim to write his book called Fooled by Random Randomness. Uh, but it uh, also reminds me a great deal of other things going on in the markets, and not just uh, now. And, uh, of course, uh, long-term capital management, Lehman Brothers. Uh, the Fed is slow to act and then overreacts. Uh, at least that's my view of both long-term capital management and Lehman Brothers. If we go back further in history, um, as I say, probably the first book you should read if you're ever interested uh, in this business is Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. Uh, I think he's got two separate uh, times uh, that he was uh, in the market uh, where people had to come in to save the market. It would have just exploded and there wouldn't have been anything left. Uh, but uh, the first one, I think, was uh, around 1907, and uh, he chronicles uh, the uh, market uh, just imploding, and literally everything was going to go boom. And finally, one of the big bankers, uh, the guy with the big red nose, I'm trying to remember his name now. I think it was J.P. Morgan. Pretty sure it was J.P. Morgan. Uh, comes in uh, to a market uh, literally burning itself to death, uh, as lighting itself uh, on fire, and comes into the uh, 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 middle of a bunch of traders in uh, the big board there in New York City and says, uh, there'll be all the money you need to start lining up over there and put an end to the one in 1907. Pretty much uh, something fairly interesting, too, uh, Jesse uh, Livermore talks about uh, it, it was I think it was J.P. Morgan maybe it was somebody else coming to him in 1929 during the crash 
Uh, and uh, I don't know. It was. It wasn't the. the it was after the, uh, the September October crash in 1929. But I think it was weeks or months, and everybody's getting ready to give up the ship. And uh, one of these big men of Wall Street comes by to Jesse and goes, "I know you got a lot of money short. In fact, Jesse had um, a lot of money short. Uh, he was going to make about 300 million dollars." on the crash in 1929. He says, uh, what are you going to do if there's nobody there on the opposite side and you can't get out? Because back then, uh, you literally had uh, to buy back your shares. Uh, and he says, uh, what good is it going to do you if the whole world goes up in flames? And Jesse took that message to heart and started buying back his, uh, covering his short positions. But uh, there's a long history from long-term capital management on one of the biggest days uh, that I will ever see, at least on a percentage basis. Uh, it was easily, I think the, S uh, the uh, Dow was down 500 points, which is kind of like being down about 1,600 points today. And that was in the morning. And then I think about 1 or 2 o'clock, Jamie Rubin and Greenspan come out and go, you know what, uh, we're going to make sure that everything's okay. And, of course, it ended up closing about 500 points up, which is about 1,500 points on the S&P cash. Or, I mean, on the uh, Dow. So you had what was probably a 3,000-point range in today's figures. Probably at least, if it wasn't 2,600, it was 3,000 points probably in today's uh, numbers. But both these things happened. And, of course... Uh, Long-term capital management and a lot of other companies that uh, involve uh, uh, and hedge funds and nitwits uh, get into a market and really believe that they've mastered it and they're a king of the markets. And, of course, long-term capital management was one that had three, count them, three different Nobel laureates involved in the company. They'd all figured out that they could beat everything if they just kept doubling down and doubling down and doubling down well the russian market and bond market in russia blew up and that was it these guys were a hundred to one leveraged in the bond market and that's all it took they almost took down the entire market with them and as i said uh you get these kind of moves but the kind of moves we get today where no one's buying almost always tells you that someone knows something and probably everybody on Wall Street knows who it is but there was someone out there and they all just stood back and let them fry it always reminds me of uh, of uh, uh, well it's a little gross I won't say that but there's a, a few things it reminds me of but literally no one is going to come to your rescue they're going to wait until everybody just blows it out. But my guess is we're going to find out some more hedge funds, maybe the art fund, uh, maybe some other ones out here that it were in real uh, dire straits, and they dumped these shares out at the lows today. Now, does that mean that everything's over? It doesn't. But probably the worst? I'm going to say yes. We're going to be back in a minute. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share win trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. As we return, uh, I want to talk just a little bit more about it. John and Dan posted a little bit more about the crash of 1907 and how the bankers came in, and that led to the uh, to the uh, formation of the Fed, uh, whose job is supposed to be keeping uh, these panics uh, and slowing them down, so that there's not a mechanical reason uh, for uh, blowing out stocks. But um, I had a couple of emails about what do I think or why do I think this is happening now. And that is the massive selling in the last 30 minutes of the day. That tells you that somebody, probably a broker uh, for one of these uh, hedge funds or an ARC fund or something, uh, is saying, hey, we need the cash now or we're selling stocks. And I, we'll sell it at any price we need to and we'll sell as much as we need to until we get you back into uh, uh, compliance with how much you're going to have. And again, probably a little bit of this is uh, the Fed uh, raising rates, which almost always means that leverage has to come out of the market. And for a great deal, people are talking about uh, the market doing the job of the Fed. Uh, I pretty much don't think that's very healthy. But um, when we look back in the history, we find out that twice uh, the Fed failed to act and caused a bigger problem. First one was on long-term capital management. They should have been uh, kicking their butts uh, way into, uh, I'm going to say, 1996. There's no way that any uh, company should have 100 to 1 or 125 to 1. It's hard to actually tell uh, how big the margin was in that. Um, they did a couple things that uh, Warren Buffett does, which is they literally become the market by buying it all up. But at the same time, how do you ever sell that? Well, they put a deal together and they bailed everything out and it was okay for a few years, but it didn't take. But yet for another year for all that to revisit us again in the debt dot com bubble, um, Lehman Brothers, the same thing. They said, well, let them fry. And guess what? Uh, it was the infection that went to everything. And I'm just very shocked uh, that the Fed hasn't really stepped in to slow this down. 
Now, slowing it down means a couple things. One, we have the highest short interest going back for at least seven years now. That is a lot of shorts. If the market just starts creeping up higher, eventually it will probably continue to creep up higher until the shorts give up, in which case the next big leg down could happen. So if you are bearish, just remember these things come fairly quickly and then make you sweat bullets for weeks and sometimes month and months until the next leg comes down. Uh, there are uh, about four books that I know of, maybe even more on long-term capital management. I would recommend reading one. There's a lot of stuff that I look at that doesn't happen very often. And everybody wants to know the stuff that will work every day. Well, generally, that's okay. But the stuff that's going to save you from blowing up and walking into two or three days that ruins your life is going to be understanding these rare events as uh, – as uh, Jesse Le or not Jesse Le as Nassim Tlaib said, uh, like long-term capital management. I think he spends a fairly good amount of his book talking about the hubris going into that. Uh, Lehman Brothers uh, getting all fat and uh, nasty on the housing bubble. But uh, who didn't know? And, of course, we're going to be able to write new, uh, uh, new uh, chapters in the book of uh, financial uh, dementia with uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, at its highs, we had $3.1 trillion in cryptocurrencies. Right now, or earlier in the day at least, uh, it was uh, just under $1.8 billion. So there's, uh, I mean, $1.8 trillion. So we had about $1.3 trillion in cryptocurrencies go to money heaven. Someone had to buy at the highs, which means they had, uh, at least to this point, uh, given up about a third or more of the overall money. Now, the Bitcoin's a little different, kind of the old guard out here. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit more uh, long in the tooth than the others, so it doesn't have as many new shares coming in. I'll call shares coins. But uh, if uh, to really understand the market and make it long term. It's not the stuff that works every day that's going to save your bacon. It's the stuff that you only see every once in a while because guess what? That's why there's so many traders that have only been around for four or five or six years. They get used to everything. They think they know it all. And one of these rare events comes out of the woods and just clubs you like a baby seal. But uh, there's a couple. I think uh, the ones that I read were, was Inventing Money. Uh, about long-term capital management, a little less about Lehman Brothers. It's a little easier to understand. Uh, the hubris of uh, long-term capital management, though, uh, epic. I think they made a movie of it, but it wasn't very good. Can't remember now. <laughs> but that's it. Uh, you can give me a call, 877-927-6648. Let's do a little history. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. <laughs> On this day in 1984, Apple Computer launches Macintosh computers uh, with a demonstration of the computer in front of 3,000 people. Of course, this was uh, just after, I think, the Super Bowl, about a week after, when they bought that Super Bowl ad, which is iconic. Why, the Apple Lisa was the first commercial computer with a graphical interface. The Macintosh would bring graphical computing and computing in general to the rest of us. As Apple's early slogan for Macintosh claimed. Well, the problem was there wasn't any real software for it. It was rather slow. You couldn't really buy faster versions of it, better processors or anything. It was what it was. And because it didn't have a really good uh, application um, like uh, the Apple IIs did, which was uh, all these uh, guys uh, getting out of uh, MBA school uh, with their masters or their bachelors, uh, in accounting and wanting a spreadsheet, there wasn't the real uh, link in uh, for Apple. In fact, Apple could have gone out of business uh, and we would have never heard probably any more about Steve Jobs. But in a rare turn of history, someone walks in the door in early 1985. This company made desktop publishing software. They've also made a deal with uh, Kirasira. I think it was Kirasira. 
uh, to make laser printers that used PostScript, generally a very high-end product. I think even back in the mid-80s here, these things were already $3,500, so fairly expensive. But uh, it's opposed to paying a printer and waiting a week to see what you got. Uh, the advent of desktop publishing saved uh, uh, Apple. And, of course, they bought their printers and had them relabeled and made a lot of money on just uh, selling. Uh, in fact, made a lot more money on selling the printer uh, than they ever did on selling the Macintosh uh, through about 1987. But uh, eh, history will teach you a lot. But, man, if you haven't been through a few of these, uh, then generally you're fairly uh, We'll be back in a minute. fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, we're going to go to David in Framingham, Massachusetts. How you Hello. doing today? Hi. Hey. I'm right here. Go ahead. Um, how is the? Do you think that the um, S and P has bottomed in today with this capitulation? I David? think it has for the week. We'll see what yeah. it does the rest of the week. But yeah, I was buying calls for Friday this morning. Yeah. So yeah, I do think it it is bottomed at least for a little while. We've got the yeah. Fed coming out uh, at two on Wednesday. 
Uh, I think they'll probably be a little bit uh, less hawkish than they thought. They see the market down 500 points in a uh, handful of days uh, for the S and P's, and yeah, they're gonna they're gonna start getting the phone call. And I, you probably don't know which one it is, yeah. but I'll tell you what it is. And this is I'm Senator So and So, and what are you doing? <laughs> this is this is what Powell's going to be getting uh, for the rest of the week because these guys all want to get re- reelected. Things don't look good for them already, yeah, and they're gonna right, go. Yeah. Uh, they're going to go, uh, you know what? Uh, what are you doing? Are you yeah. nuts? Are you, I mean, you, you don't yell fire in a crowded theater. And, you know, there, there, a lot of people say, well, you know, it's just temporary and stuff. You know, it's not different. I said two weeks ago, I think this is going to be the year of picking stocks. I think that you're going to have a uh, index that maybe moves around a bit like the yeah. – NASDAQ or the S&Ps, but there's going to be as many winners as losers, and it's going to be, you're not going to be making a lot of money just going along the indexes. It's going to be picking the fastest horses and getting off of them uh, and getting on yet another faster horse. Yeah, because I thought that the um, anybody that wants to be out of the market worried about the Fed has gone here, and the market's beginning to stabilize here, so um, that's what Yeah, I there, there's probably a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of this uh, was probably we're going to find out that there was probably a handful of folks that were way over the tips of their skis. Yeah. And uh, now you remember that uh, I it sounds like you got a little aged to her voice. I remember every Saturday watching the wide world of sports, that same skier. He never learned. She just kept on jumping over and, and absolutely getting smashed to bits. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's a, there was way over the tips of their skis, which is where that saying comes from. And, uh, yeah, they have to clean them out every once in a while. But generally, I think we've got enough to get the, uh, uh, the market back down to about the mean of the growth going forward. Uh, I showed that chart maybe three, four weeks ago, maybe before Christmas, can't remember. Uh, and said this is the most important chart you need to look at. Um, there wasn't a lot to tell us that uh, this would happen, you know, last week and this week. Normally doesn't happen uh, during uh, options expiration. So yeah. another kind of year of everything being breaking all the rules. But, uh, yeah, I think we're probably in. Stocks that are cheap. Uh, relative on a, a PE basis are probably going to do fine. If you've got high growth and you don't need a lot of cash, I think you're going to do fine. Uh, but uh, I think we're probably just going to hover uh, after the recovery today into what the Fed says. And uh, the Fed's probably going to know by the congressmen and senators calling them, uh, that they probably may not change what they do but certainly the tone and uh, speed of what they do uh, will be a lot different. I'm sure they're getting a near full uh, from uh, the president or his office. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there's probably a lot in there. And, of course, the idea uh, of the Fed, uh, someone brought it up, was to yeah, – someone in the den says this is going to be a Pony Express market, hopping off one horse and getting on a fresh new one. But I think that's going to be a lot of it. If you think we're just going to be able to sit back on your stocks and look forward, I think it's just going to be everybody looking for a faster horse for a while until these uh, uh, interest rate hikes are in, which I don't think are all that big a difference or big a move. Um, And I think, actually, we're probably looking uh, for the best things I see, kind of the looking forward past the end of the pandemic. Uh, I think uh, it could evaporate uh, as if you look at other ones in the past, historically, you get this one big last move and then it just burns itself out. Now, it hadn't yet, but I'm the best people I follow uh, suspect that the numbers do tell us that. Yeah. So anyways, so I, I yeah, I felt as though the, the, this could have been it. Um uh, like today's uh, clean out here this morning, this afternoon. Yeah, you can always get a you can always get a retest of the low, though, right? Right, you can't if it yeah. does. 
But I don't. I don't think we're going to get that this week. I think you. No. I, I think the Fed is probably going to be a little bit uh, more dovish in what they say, but not what they do. And everybody will go, okay, well, maybe they only go three times or two times this year if the market keeps pulling back and everything uh, with the unrest of, uh, you know, invasion of Taiwan and, and the Ukraine and um, kind of a lack of uh, confidence in the U.S. government uh, around the world for geopolitical events. And, uh, you know, as long as crude prices remain high, too, that's a massive tax on everyone. So, I mean, it's not all rosy, but uh, if you're in a company that doesn't have to worry about uh, the high price of transportation, um, you know, you're probably going to continue to have a year full of inflation. Yeah. David, do you see the this pet turning into a V-shaped pattern here on the more, Probably more U-ish, and we're probably U-ish, at the bottom. U-ish. Yeah, more U-ish. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that there's probably a fairly good uh, bet out here that we've had it. Now, the question is, do you see selling again into the close today? If you do, that tells you that whoever is on the whipping post is not done yet. I don't think we do because I would imagine they would have dumped those shares on Friday. I would agree I, with you, yes. yeah. Just yeah. because if you're a... Uh, if you're a uh, uh, somebody uh, on in Wall Street, a broker, and you got somebody that's way out of margin, you just get rid of it. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, so, right, right, right. I, yeah, I think I was, they. I was just thinking that um, at around three o'clock there'll be margin calls going out, and that'll be the end of it if it does drop. Otherwise, they sold yeah. out earlier. <laughs> Yeah, generally they don't like to go into a weekend with those margin calls. Yeah. So my guess is if anybody was actually very close to begin with, yeah, that's yeah. it. You may have uh, more retail traders now. I put it in my newsletter this morning. But uh, the uh, the uh, dark pool numbers are very uh, low, which yeah, suggests yeah. that a lot of the selling over the last day or so is probably retail traders. And they tend to... Uh, give up their shares at the very lows yeah. and do the absolute wrong thing at the wrong time. Okay. So probably pretty close, but yeah, we can watch. But okay. uh, yeah, could we get a retest yet again today? I think we could, but uh, not much okay. else. Okay. Thank you very much, David. You're very good. Thank you, you bet. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, is today's decline enough to create more margin calls uh, tomorrow morning? Uh well, first of all, that's not the way it works. We'll uh, talk about the way margin calls actually work when we return. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for valued tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. As we return, uh, question of the den. Uh, we need to talk about how margin uh, calls actually work. There was a big movie with that title. Not a bad movie to watch, by the way, of uh, uh, basically a Lehman Brothers fiasco. Um, in fact, I would recommend it highly. But let's go back to mar real margin calls in the market. Uh, they happen twice a day. Uh, you're going to find they ha uh, happen at 10.30 in the morning, and then they happen about now at 2.30. And what happens is you, if you're a big guy on Wall Street or a retail trader, you're going to – if you're a retail trader, you get an email. Maybe if you're lucky, the broker calls you, and he says, you've got uh, 30 minutes to put cash in uh, to get your margin back in line, or we're going to sell you out. And everybody on Wall Street pretty much knows how that number is going to come in for the different stocks. So I'm not surprised we're getting a little bit here, but it doesn't look bad so far. But normally around this time, now, when does the actual selling come in? From about 310 to 330. And my guess is that uh, you'll probably see a little dip then. The last 30 minutes are really what you're going to be calling about. Um, uh, or really be watching today. And my guess is that you had the most of it on Friday. You have a little less of it. A lot of stocks already reversed. So if you were good on Friday, I'm going to say three-fourths of the stocks are probably going to be okay today. Uh, and uh, this kind of puts an end to it. Now, if, it, uh, if you get a day, then everybody gets a little bit uh, better off. But you got the Fed. I don't know if a lot of people are going to want to get into the Fed or get in front of the Fed on Wednesday. But I think there's that. Now, there is, of course, a lot of uh, gamifying what the Fed is going to say, I just can't believe, uh, I don't think they're going to change what they're going to do, but I do think that the tone is going to be very different now that the S&P went down 500 points straight. Uh, they will understand uh, that uh, letting the air out of the balloon just makes it fly around real quick, and then, of course, it's all out. And if you don't slow down the roll, you do get into the problem of having a huge mechanical, uh, never-ending uh, whirlpool of uh, the pit of despair. And I'm sure they get, like I said, I'm sure they got an earful of it this weekend. I'm sure they're getting an earful of it this week uh, from the people over their heads. And that is, what are you doing? If you want them to let the market out, you just don't, you just don't open the door to the refrigerator and leave it open. And, uh, eh, or run around with scissors. Those are the two things my mom yelled me at. 
I remember that running around with scissors and uh, that. So the first thing I did when I got my first apartment was leave the refrigerator door open, fan it a little bit, and run around with scissors just to assert my dominance in my new uh, abode. Anyway, uh, we're off 109 points, as I said. Uh, do we? Eh, 114. Um, are we going to get a little bit more here? Yes. Do we probably break? I don't think so. But we shall see. But I think we've got kind of the low in for a little bit, and we'll see. But uh, there's going to be some selling. Uh, you know, it's not going to be over. Uh, in the olden days, they'd give you three days. But remember those times, 1030 in the morning, 230 in the afternoon, 245. Those when the calls are going to go out to the people that are on the wrong side of the market and hoping that they'd get a bounce and then they could sell out of it. Uh, that ain't going to happen. Uh, as I said before, uh, I'm not adding uh, really to anything that I'm going to have overnight for equity positions. Uh, if I'm buying something, it's buying at the lows and selling 30 minutes later or 45 minutes later. I did that a couple of times today. But if I'm going to buy something, it's going to be uh, something with some asymmetrical reward like an option uh, where, my, uh, where I can risk maybe 3% of my portfolio or less and uh, maybe get 9% back or 12% back. I'm not going to be uh, betting the farm. Uh, I'm going to have my risk controlled. And, you know, if you can get one of those huge down thrusts where everybody's coughing up uh, calls, not a bad time to buy them. You've got to get out of them. And, of course, uh, once the market starts moving higher, everybody will want to want them. And the premiums will start coming back in on the calls, which they were about nothing this morning. 877-927-6648. And let's see what else do we have here. Okay. Okay. Dave, do you think Microsoft is a buy now? Da, 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 da. Yeah. You went and retested uh, the candles of this low. Let's get out of this and reset it. Um, 280.25. You got to, uh, through it this morning. Um, you had twice the volume. Yeah, it's hard for me. You got a little bit more energy on the way down. I'm going to say Microsoft more likely is in a bigger trading range, and that trading range may last for a while. Um, many of these other big companies that are out there. It does not have the same real problems that uh, companies like Facebook and Google have with regulation. Uh, Google and Facebook have done exactly what you're not supposed to do, and that's tick off everybody on one side or another or for one reason or another. Uh, and literally everybody hates you. Uh, Google continues to assault the uh, free speech of at least half of America on a daily basis. Uh, and uh, other things that are rather hideous. Uh, I just don't understand who in the world thinks like this, but uh, apparently they all do. Um, so uh, do I think that these kind of bigger companies are coming in for a reckoning um, on both sides of the aisle politically. Yes, and they're you know probably going to have at least one, if not two, um, sides of Congress with uh, subpoena authority uh, after November. And as that happens, what are these guys going to do? Um, they are going to be sitting in front of people that they would not like uh, or they wouldn't let speak, not because they said anything that was wrong, just because they thought maybe they would say something was wrong. And I don't think it's going to go well for them at all. Um, the pendulums uh, in societal evolution swing very large, but when they get to one uh, extreme, they swing back fairly quickly. And I think uh, their war on free speech is going to be a huge issue against Google. And why they can't maybe do anything on a frontal assault, uh, I think everybody in the world uh, is going to be going after Google and Facebook uh, for um, antitrust violations. Uh, Google on its ad uh, front, um, already facing this in Europe. Uh, Facebook, as I said, I'm making a rather bold prediction that by the end of the year, Zuckerberg is gone. Uh, and he's hiding out on his compound in Hawaii. 
You had a good uh, test down here on Facebook. You're going to have more volume. But, like I said, probably, could you get back up to 325? You probably could. But I think all these stocks uh, in antitrust um, sites are uh, problematic for the long term. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. I had uh, some more questions about margin, at least what I believe. Uh, if it has not been my experience, somebody at the den said you normally have three days to close a call. All I can think of is uh, last year with uh, Interactive Brokers uh, and when everybody went the uh, wrong way on uh, the uh, oil contracts before they bought them, uh, they didn't give anybody five seconds. They booted you out instantly. They didn't even give you a phone call. So it depends. Uh, it's more uh, uh, less of a rule and more of a suggestion is that from uh, – uh, the curse of the black pearl uh, about uh, parlay rules and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, they don't have to do anything. They can take you out in a New York second. And guess what? If they think you wouldn't pay them back, they're going to do it. And especially if you're a retail trader. Uh, they won't worry about your business because they're not going to make that much off of you. Uh, they're more than interested in uh, you know losing 10 grand real quick. You'd have to be their customer for the next 10 years for them to get it back. Uh, and sometimes, sometimes not. 
<laughs> Actually, yeah, I was a little bullish, Ruby. Just a little. Like I said, I'm more interested in individual stocks than that. Uh, another question about uh, why do we see the selling at the very last 30 minutes of the day when you say that the margin calls come in at 215? Because they're selling those uh, into the dark pools, and those don't instantly get reported. They're supposed to, but not one person's ever been fined. No one company's ever been fined that I know of, and I watch the FINRA uh, and SEC stuff fairly religiously. Um, I don't see a lot ever happening to anybody that sells something at two uh, at three fifteen, and then uh, you know it says the okay, here it is at three three forty five or three fifty. They just get it in for the end. Of the day. Sell when you can, not when you have to, and we will return like MacArthur to the Philippines tomorrow. 